I recall uh, an interesting cultural uh, dilemma I was in. I got asked by one of my classmates about six months into uh, my course, one of my colleagues comes up to me and asks me, in India do people swim? And I was taken aback. I did not know what to say to him because that's a question I just cannot answer. How do I answer to one billion people swimming? <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> but um, I, I did what you're doing. I laughed. And then I realized that is exactly where uh, we need to, what we need to work on. Because if I'm going to laugh at him, he's never he going to ask, ask another, another question. question. And I'm, uh, he'll never know anything about India, not want to visit or... True. Um, or any of that. was, um, is there such thing as bad culture? What do you think? Um, well, um, if I was to put myself on the line here, um, I've come from a bit of a tough background. Mm. And the culture in which I grew up in, which was South London, um, we've developed a very, very negative culture. After our discussion with Julia, um, the highlights for me was um, the fact that um, I shouldn't totally disregard my past, but I should rather take on board um, various things from where I've came, come from and um, bring it on to the next level of my life or the next stage of my life forever. Again, growing up in South London, it's, it's um, kind of detached from, like, like, putting me on the line, it's like, where I was then and where I am now, it's like two completely different yeah. worlds. And the world I'm in now, mm. it's, it doesn't interact at all with the world I was in. And what I would as well like some advice on is how from here do I go back and influence the mm. people out of what they are presently in. But isn't it, tr isn't it true that that there isn't something here mm -hmm. and something there. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. has huge roots in this. Mm -hmm. You know, it may be, you know, that culture teaches you all kinds of things that are crazy, mm -hmm. but it might also teach you that, you know, your mother is the person that you've mm -hmm. got to pull everything out for. Mm -hmm. And that is fundamental to you. Mm -hmm. Whatever you become here, mm -hmm. it's absolutely, and it was rooted in that, mm -hmm. and you only really understood that because of that world. So I think there's a real danger that you sort of, you do believe that there's a disconnect when actually there isn't a disconnect at all. You, you always evolve from this. And, and the danger is that you then begin to think that because that's disconnected, that's somehow good and that's somehow bad. I have an idea, I agree with that. You have to focus on present now. Mm -hmm. Not focusing anymore in past. Mm -hmm. You have to put it behind you. Mm -hmm. And I know you, you try now, you, you learn different culture now, mm -hmm. and you are better now what mm -hmm. you past. So if you're going to be thinking about the past, how are you going to change it? Now think about the future. How are you going to change the new generation mm -hmm. in your area? Mm -hmm. And you have to be an example, a mm -hmm. simple as a leader. So mm -hmm. today we're all like trying to be a leader, and you have to be like focusing, get that people out the street and show them how that culture works and how well we can be connected together. Mm -hmm. and I think that's the best uh, advice you can Definitely. offer. Culture transfers is perceived everyone, every organization, every region, and every country has culture. For me, as culture intelligence is about the ability to grow personally through continuous learning and good understanding of diverse culture heritage, wisdom, and value, and to deal effectively with people from different culture, background, and understanding. 
cultural intelligence and gender has uh, has was brought up today and that was something that has uh, been troubling me uh, throughout I went to Jeddah thinking it'd be very interesting to understand Jeddah and actually all it did was make me understand me yeah <laughs> um, is is Firstly, the point I was, you know, the assumption is that anybody, any woman who covers herself must be beaten about, giving up, must be letting the side down, must be not a whole human being, must be... And, and you discover that was so stupid. It was stunning. You know, there were lots of tough women who I admire enormously, who choose to cover themselves for a multitude of different reasons. Um, and that was a big eye-opener for me, and, it's, and it's, it's awful to admit that I hadn't realised that. Having grown up in a, a culture where it is difficult to be uh, a female, um, I do constantly feel a fight, sometimes when it is not even necessary. And um, uh, trying to understand that feeling and uh, probably uh, toning him down a little bit um, might benefit everyone around me. I had a very similar realization. Uh, this is what we were discussing uh, earlier, weren't we? Um, about, uh, uh, about wearing headgear. And this was one of the participants in one of my groups in, at the conference pointed it out to me, saying it's probably that you do not respect the women for wearing the headgear, which is why you wouldn't um, give them the benefit of looking at their opinion yeah. at the, from their point of view. And um, I, I've constantly faced issues as a as a, a woman, especially in India. Yeah. Um, you are you you are not an identity. You're a, you're a daughter, or you're a wife, or you're a sister, and everyone's out to. Um, or a daughter-in-law. Or a daughter-in-law, <laughs> of course. That, that, that too, that too. And um, uh, being a married woman in India is, uh, uh, and having your own opinions, is, it's not easy. And it, it's not because your family is not, um, is not supportive of you. It's because society as a whole has ideas that are so difficult to fight. How is culture formed? How is it created? Where does it start? Um, well, if I think about the people I spoke to on the, in the book, and they were quite interesting, they were, I, I said to them, um, if you want to find your core, what you go and do, yeah? Mm -hmm. And they said things like, um, you think about your stories in your childhood or your parents' childhood or your ancestors' childhood that, that have stuck. You know, there must be hundreds of stories, but one or two always stick. And, and then you go back to them and you say, why have they stuck? What is it in there that's, that's fundamentally for me and the culture that I am? And I think, I think that's for a lot of people, and, and certainly that's true in me. I, you know, the, 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 I, I don't know how many generations back um, there was some ancestor of mine who did a very extraordinary thing during the, British, the English Civil War. And all the generations it's come down, I still know that story. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, what does that say? Coming from the Caribbean, well, a tiny island in the Caribbean, coming to London, it was definitely a cultural shock because um, it was having to understand, you know, a, a totally different culture. But then what was more shocking is to understand that London, as diverse as it is, it meant now that I'm not just coming to learn English culture, but to embrace different cultures within um, London itself. So I've learned to realize that um, where cultural intelligence is concerned, in order for me to embrace all the different cultures that I was faced with having to deal with, I had to take a step back and reflect and to look at myself and my values and what I believe in and stuff like that. Because one of the things that we have to understand now that culture is not just about 
let's say, fish and chips or the traditional meal that you deal with. It has to do with sexual orientation, it has to do with gender and all these different things that we're now faced with. And when you look at all of that, if you're not willing to embrace everything as a package, then um, cultural intelligence would probably be a bit um, restrictive for you or will prove to be more challenging. For anybody to have cultural intelligence, the eagerness to want it is very important. Um, but the counter to, the, to that would be there are probably very few people who are eager to have what we call cultural intelligence. What do we do about the rest who don't want it or don't mm. uh, think about it at all? Yeah, I think it is in, important um, in terms of going for the job market um, in the sense that, let's say, for example, uh, I work in mental health and um, on any given day you can have someone walking into the ward who needs to be seen to. Um, now, their background might be totally different to my background where you're looking at um, culture. Um, but then I would just have to embrace the whole issue of what their culture is all about and get on with, with dealing with the issue as it is. An awful lot of people want great jobs and, and they want great careers. And, and I genuinely don't think that your generation will have the great jobs and the great careers without cultural intelligence. Um, you know, they may even get a job, but they won't get promoted unless they've got any cultural intelligence. You know, you, to be promoted, you, you've got to be somebody who can sit amongst the five of us and have an interesting and intelligent conversation where e nobody thinks, oh, you know, I'm me, so they don't want to talk to me. Do you know what I mean? You, you've got to gather all the talents of everybody. If there are four million students who travel to study, yeah, and if we could shift their behavior so that instead of traveling to study, arriving in a new city, which is frightening, mm. and thinking, let me find all the other Indian women and then stay with them because that will give me comfort of numbers. Mm -hmm. If you can reverse that mm -hmm. and say, not quite, I don't want to meet any Indian women. That's not necessarily the best I did solution. Try that. You didn't try that. <laughs> but, but, you know, let me take advantage of all these different people. Let me find, let me, let me soak up all the knowledge I possibly can. Um, if, if we can shift people's thinking, then, then I think that you could, you could get quite a big shift in the world. Because by definition, the, the people who travel to study are likely to be um, influences of cultures in the future. So, so from our point of view, that's what I want to concentrate on, how you, how you shift that.